It's such a pleasure to be here today. This is probably, um, in my opinion, the most important audience to speak to. And so I'm from Montreal originally, and I went to St. George's High School, but in Montreal. So I see you, St. George's boys. Um, the first thing that I'm going to talk about are disclosures. So any scientist should always disclose if they have any potential conflicts of interest. And I'm mentioning these two, that I received funding from these two different companies, and I provided advice to them because they make intravenous iron. So it's always re really, really, really critical whenever you're going to a talk and a scientist is speaking to understand their disclosures. So these are potential conflicts of interest. So I'm here to talk about the iron mom. So I'm going to start by asking you all to imagine if there was a simple solution to make all people on this earth smarter, more capable, and more productive. There is a solution, and that's by giving all pregnant women iron. So once upon a time, iron deficiency or low iron actually offered an evolutionary selective advantage. But this was at a time when our average life expectancy was 28 years and where the most common cause of death was infection, including infection from siderophilic bacteria. Siderophilic means iron-loving bacteria. But we no longer live in this area. Iron deficiency no longer offers us an evolutionary advantage, right? The average life expectancy now is in the range of 80 to 90 years old. In fact, the average life expectancy in Korea is 92 years. So iron deficiency is no longer a good thing for us. So iron is critical because it results in the formation of red blood cells. And if you don't have enough iron, you don't make enough red blood cells, and we call this anemia. So iron is the flatbed of the red blood cell truck. And the red blood cell truck carries oxygen and delivers it to the vital organs in our body. Okay, so the flatbed literally holds the oxygen in place. That's iron's role in red blood cells. So it carries it around um, to your body. So it picks up oxygen in the lungs and brings it up to the brain and other important tissues in our body. But that's not the only thing that iron does. So it's really, really important to make red blood cells. In fact, our red blood cells, our blood is the richest source of iron in our bodies. But iron is also really critical for DNA synthesis. It maintains immune cell functions. Um, it facilitates proper metabolism in our body because it helps enzymes do what they should normally do. It's a critical cofactor to enzyme function. So the problem of iron deficiency in pregnancy is huge. So iron deficiency and anemia doesn't just make people tired and make them feel a bit crummy. Iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy leads to crippling fatigue in mothers, shortness of breath on exertion, chest pain. It leads to them having an increased risk of requiring a blood transfusion around the time of delivery, and it's also associated with postpartum depression. For babies, it actually can be even worse. It leads to low birth weight. It leads to premature delivery. And it actually leads to long-term learning problems. We know this. It actually decreases academic scores in preschool children. So this is a big problem. So let's talk about the challenge of iron debt. So when a woman menstruates, when she has her period, she loses about 10 to 20 milligrams of elemental iron per cycle, per month, okay? So imagine doing that. Now the average menstrual age is 10 years old. It's getting younger and younger and younger. So you're doing that every single month until you have a baby. And we're actually starting to have babies older and older and older. So the period of time where we're losing blood up to pregnancy is actually getting longer and longer and longer, right? And so then a woman gets pregnant. And what happens? She starts making extra blood to sustain her pregnancy. She starts making placenta to feed the baby, to shelter the baby. And her body actually starts making a baby. And to do all of that, it takes over a gram of iron. So a gram of iron doesn't really sound like a lot, right? I just need to contextualize that for you. One gram of iron is the equivalent of 177 large steaks. There is no woman on this earth who can eat 177 large steaks throughout her pregnancy. No way, no how, okay? 
So in response to this problem and the commonality of the problem, the World Health Organization suggests daily oral iron supplements for all pregnant women. So it sounds like, great, that's awesome, because prenatal vitamins contain iron. That's thought to be the solution. The trouble is, the prenatal vitamin is not a solution. And that is because the prenatal vitamin, one, doesn't contain enough iron, and two, the prenatal vitamin contains something called divalent cations, which is calcium and magnesium, which interferes with the absorption of iron. So even though you're taking this pill, the stuff in the pill, complex to the iron, interferes with the absorption of iron. This is a huge missed opportunity. What's even more important is that iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia is an issue of public health, of health equity, and even of social justice. And that is because iron deficiency is more common amongst people of lower socioeconomic status. So that means that the people that are at highest risk for iron deficiency, i.e. those who can't afford to, to buy iron-rich foods because steak and meats are expensive, those are also the people that are less likely to access medical care. So those who are most prone to iron deficiency, i.e. the problem, are also those less likely to be treated. So why aren't doctors and nurses and nurse practitioners doing anything about this? Well, it's not because they're stupid. It's not because they're lazy. It's because they are dealing with other important clinical problems in the middle of a very complicated clinical practice. Okay, so medicine is actually becoming increasingly complicated. So when you see an obstetrician and you're pregnant, they're going through a ton of potential problems, making sure that you're safe and healthy in a bunch of different parameters. And they also may not realize the importance of iron deficiency in pregnancy, and I bet for sure they don't know that the prenatal vitamin is not a solution. So that's where we come in. So our solution to this huge problem is something called the Iron Mom which is a toolkit. And version one was a paper-based toolkit. I know, it's 2019, oh my god, 2019, and we're talking about paper, right? So we created this toolkit that contained educational resources, testing pathways, and treatment pathways. We also created standardized prescription pads for doctors. All of this to make it easier for doctors and nurse practitioners and midwives to do the right thing, because we made it easy for them. Also, we targeted the patients by creating educational resources so that they would understand how important iron deficiency is for them and for their baby, so it enabled them to become advocates for their health and the health of their child. So these are some of the examples of the algorithms that we put together. And here's the change that we made to the requisition, the, the piece of paper that the doctors tick off to choose which blood test they want to order. The only change that we made is we moved the iron test, the ferritin test, just under the test where we check the complete blood count to see how much red blood cells are present in that woman's body. We didn't automatically tick it off, we just moved it to a more prominent position. And these are the educational tools that we created for women. So was the Iron Mom version one successful? Actually, yes. Even though it was paper-based, even though those algorithms look really complicated, and even though we knew that the obstetricians were telling us that the algorithms were too tricky and that they didn't have time for it. So we found a greater than tenfold increase in ferritin testing rates. So we knew that we are in fact testing all pregnant women's iron levels at St. Michael's Hospital. And we deliver 3,000 babies per year. So this was huge. So this blue line over here tells us the ferritin testing rates pre-iron mom. So the x-axis is time and the y-axis is the monthly rate of ferritin testing. And this is the iron mom implementation date and you can see that the ferritin testing rate increased by more than tenfold. So for the first time we actually had the opportunity to actually know how many pregnant women were iron deficient. So there are lots of estimates in the literature that tell us that about 30 to 40% of women who are pregnant are anemic. So we knew that from global estimates, right? So we knew it was a really important problem. But we had no clue, no estimates in the literature could be found to tell us how many of those women, forget anemia for a second, how many of them are actually iron deficient. And we found that 91.2% of them were iron deficient at delivery. 
So this isn't a problem. This isn't an epidemic. This is a pandemic. This is something that affects almost everyone. And the second way that we evaluated success, we wanted to know, with the implementation of this paper-based toolkit, could we actually make women's hemoglobin, meaning the amount of red blood cells that they have in their blood at delivery, higher? So we looked at the proportion of women that delivered with a hemoglobin under 100. And even though our toolkit was imperfect, even though it was a bit outdated, even though it was a bit complicated, we still made a statistically significant difference. We dropped the proportion of women with significant anemia by 2%, pre-Iron Mom compared to post-Iron Mom. So this was an important signal for us. So we knew that we needed to move forward with the Iron Mom. We knew that we had to make it better. And we also were encouraged by this early success. So that's when we pitched the Iron Mom version 2, which was a revised intervention where we simplified it, where we digitized it, and where we made it more patient-centric. Because we knew that we had to release a public health campaign. So I'm sure that all of you have heard about the importance of folic acid treatment during pregnancy. You've probably heard about that and decreasing something called neural tube defects in babies. Well, that came about because of a huge public health campaign in the 70s and 80s. And now every woman gets folic acid deficiency, an amazingly successful public health campaign. And that tells us that pregnant women are a really captive audience and that they want to change. So we knew we had to do something similar. So when we found that basically every pregnant woman was iron deficient, we also knew that we just needed to give everyone an iron pill. And so we revised our intervention as well. We knew that we didn't need these complicated algorithms anymore. We just needed to say, start them on the iron pill, and that we needed to support the woman through her pregnancy so that she knew how to take it properly. So we pitched this in 2017 at something called the Angel's Den here at St. Michael's Hospital. So because of the support of the St. Michael's Hospital Foundation, there's this really fun and exciting competition that was developed called the Angel's Den where um, a group of clinician scientists had the opportunity to pitch their research ideas to the real dragon's dens. So the real judges from the dragon's den were there, and we pitched it to them. And so myself and my colleague, Dr. Lisa Hicks, pitched it, and we were lucky enough to win in the social innovation stream. And the reason why this was so important is it because it gave us the money that we needed to convert the Iron Mom into version two. This is a really important slide because it shows all of the people that it takes to be successful in science. So this is not a one-person show. This requires input from a huge and amazingly talented and dedicated team, and these are just some of them. So what did we do with the Iron Mom? We made it into an app, a patient-facing app, because we knew that we had to engage the mom. And so it taught her about the importance of iron deficiency. It reminds her to take her iron pill. It sends push notifications to tell her to take it. It teaches her about the journey over the course of her pregnancy and how critical iron is throughout the entire pregnancy. And we also have these marketing materials that are up in our clinics that say to all these women that are sitting in the waiting room, please download this app, and it gives them a pin so that they can download it. We also created a, a practitioner, a health practitioner facing website. And that website reinforced from the doctor's side the importance of iron deficiency in pregnancy. And it taught them how to test for it, how to treat it. And it really emphasized to the doctor to say to their patient, download the Iron Mom app. And this is an example of our updated management algorithm. So you can see it's far more simple. It starts with give iron to everybody and then tell them to download the app. And we also change the prescription pads. So we have done a lot. We've been very, very busy over the last year and a half developing this app. You would think, oh, that's so easy. You already had all the materials. Just dump it into an app. It's actually a huge undertaking. And we connected with a tech company called True Technologies out of Kingston, Ontario. 
And we have been going back and forth with them a million times. And we have to make sure that the Iron Mom is actually a really user-friendly app, because you know there's nothing more annoying when you download an app and it doesn't work the way you want it to work or it doesn't give you the information that you want it. Uh, that you want it to. So we have been going through numerous revisions to try to perfect it. Now what's important is that we have much bigger goals for the Iron Mom. Because you could say, wow, great, now that you have the digital Iron Mom, it's ready for launch, just release it across the country. Well, in science, it's not that simple. So we need to create something called a randomized control trial to prove that our intervention actually really works. So a randomized control trial takes either a group of people, or in this case, a group of hospitals across the country, and literally flips a coin where half of the clusters, half of the hospitals, or half of the people that you're studying get randomized to the intervention, which is the Iron Mom, and half get randomized to a placebo, or in this case, standard of care. And the reason why it's so important to flip that coin and to randomize these sites is because you want to minimize bias. That means that if, let's say, if I didn't create a randomized control trial and I just picked the centers that I knew would be super motivated to implement the Iron Mom, where I knew that all of those women at those sites were, were really, really wealthy, and so all of them are going to get iron-rich foods automatically, and I said all the people who are not motivated and all the sites that serve you know, under-resourced patient populations, all of those are going to get standard of care. And then I look at the results and I publish that and I say, look how great the Iron Mom is. Look at all these women who have perfect hemoglobins at the time of delivery. I am presenting biased results in that case. So the flipping of the coin is critical in science. And that's the highest level of science that we have. So we can do this. And the reason why we can do this at St. Mike's is because we have the Canaan Research Center, because we have the Li Ka-Shing Institute. So we have world-renowned clinical epidemiologists who have helped us develop and design this randomized control trial. We have amazingly talented biostatisticians, quality improvers who have helped us refine the Iron Mom, people who are experts in something called big data, who know how to use huge volumes of data, because we're going to have information on hundreds of thousands of women in this country. 400,000 babies are born each year in Canada. And we also have experts in patient engagement in our team. So it's been a massive undertaking. So we have big goals for the Iron Mom. We need this randomized control trial so that we can change health policy, so that we can change guidelines worldwide, so that the Iron Mom can be freely available to all pregnant women. And we're also translating the Iron Mom into multiple languages as well. So you'll remember at the beginning of this talk, I asked you all to imagine a simple solution to make all people on this earth smarter, healthier, and more productive. The solution is the Iron Mom. Thank you.